If you still have Christmas decorations up on your mantle, hit that subscribe button. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Miley and this week I am so excited that I have a much easier project planned out. Don't get me wrong, I have had fun the last three weeks, but those were all really big projects and getting them done in one week was really hard. So in my kitchen, I actually have a fireplace. And back when I moved in, one of the first things I did was paint the fireplace black and then paint the mantle a charcoal gray. And ever since then, it's really just sat like that. It's too early in the day for accidental rhyming. So what I wanna do this week is create some artwork for this fireplace and then just finish decorating it. And for the artwork, I don't want to do anything too crazy. I just want to do some abstract art that has color and texture and is simple. So I did a bit of preparation yesterday for this video. The first thing I did was actually make a big canvas. Big canvases can be pretty expensive and they're really easy to make. So if you do a lot of artwork, I encourage you to make your own canvases. You're going to save so much money. The other thing I did was take some old canvases, paint over them, and the reason I did that is because I am going to be testing out three different techniques for these paintings, seeing which one I like before I get to the big painting. So let's get started making some abstract art. Okay, the first technique I'm trying is mixing paint and baking soda. I've seen a lot of people use this mixture for painting on vases and other random home decor items, but I haven't seen anybody use this to make textured abstract art. So I figure, hey, let's just give it a try. And none of this was measured out by any means. I just mixed a random amount of paint and baking soda together until I liked the texture and thought it was good and chunky. Once I got to the canvas, I didn't think about anything. I just started going for it, scraping some paint across the canvas. And I love black, so of course I gravitated towards instantly jumping in with black. Probably not the best decision, but black is my favorite, so I thought for sure I would want to use black in the big painting. But plot twist, I ended up not using black in the big painting. So not only was I searching for which technique I liked the best, but I was also seeing which colors I wanted to use. This canvas is big, so if I'm going to have to stare at these colors, I wanted to make sure I liked them. So at first the baking soda didn't really seem to alter the paint too much. It was really easy to work with and blend colors together, but it wasn't giving me a ton of texture and grit. So at some point in this painting, I ran out of the first mixture I had done with the paint and baking soda. And in the second round, I added way more baking soda, and I really liked the texture I was getting when I did that. Unfortunately, I'd pretty much filled up the canvas by the time I got the consistency right, and I did try to go back and rework some areas, but then it just became overworked, colors became muddy, all that. So I just chalked it up to, hey, this is the first painting. I could have told you it probably wasn't gonna turn out the best. So after the first painting, I still wanted to give this baking soda technique another try. So now knowing that I like using a lot more baking soda, I changed up the mixture and instead of putting paint in first, I put baking soda in the little bowls first and then added paint. And this gave me a much more thick, gritty texture. And the paint mixture did not go far. It was very hard to spread, but it's exactly the kind of texture I was looking for. And yeah, I was still on this kick that I was going to use really dark colors in the big painting. So for this round, I used really dark colors, black, charcoal gray, a medium gray. And there is a reason why I changed up my tune, but you're gonna have to keep watching to find out. 
So overall, I love the way this painting turned out, so the baking soda technique was a win. But now it's time to test out the second technique. Okay, we are getting rid of the baking soda and bringing in some joint compound. Now, joint compound is not plaster. It's very similar to plaster, but there's one key difference. And that is plaster dries really fast and joint compound is a little bit slower to dry. So you have more time to work with the joint compound before it dries. So this technique is very similar to the baking soda technique. It's just that joint compound is a different way of thickening the paint. And once I began to spread this out over the canvas, I noticed a big difference in the texture. With the baking soda, I got a really gritty sand-like texture, but with this, it was really smooth and clay-like. Which makes sense because there is a bit of clay in joint compound. The other thing I instantly noticed and really liked was colors didn't blend together as easily which meant I was able to avoid getting those really overworked muddy areas like in the first painting. And this is also the point where I started to realize I really liked the look of the lighter colors over darker colors. I of course still use black in this painting, but I ended up near the end going through and really blending out the black areas with gray and white paint. For this last technique, it was still using joint compound, but a little bit different. Instead of mixing the paint in, I just began to spread the joint compound all over the canvas. I wanted to give this technique a try because not having the paint mixed in, I could really focus on the texture and building the texture. When I had the paint mixed in, I couldn't focus on the texture solely. I needed to blend everything out nicely. And just like I thought, it was really nice to focus on the texture, then wait for this joint compound to dry, and then go in with color. And going in with color was super easy. I got to use a normal paintbrush, blend the paint out like I normally would with any other painting. And with this particular painting, I also wanted to try out some lighter colors or what a painting would look like if I just stuck to really light muted colors. Okay, so the question is what technique and colors am I going to use for the big painting? I really like both techniques and you can get really cool textured looks with either one. With the baking soda, you get a more gritty, rough look. The one nice thing about the baking soda is it is buildable. If you want it more gritty, add more baking soda, more smooth, add more paint. And the joint compound, I love the clay texture I got with it. As I took a step back, I looked at each painting and I started to visualize the fireplace all together and not just this painting because obviously I'm going to put more on the fireplace than just this painting. So for the big painting, I decided to go with light colors and the joint compound paint mixture. And I chose this for a few reasons. One, the fireplace is black, so I thought a light picture would really pop off the black wall. And the second reason I went with light colors and the joint compound is because I really like the way this dark painting turned out. And I decided that I wanted to do a nice little layered look. So this painting will sit in front of the big painting off to the side. And since I used the baking soda technique on the smaller painting, I thought I would change it up and do joint compound for the bigger one. And after going back through a second time, building up those layers, here is the final piece all complete. I love how it turned out. It turned out exactly like how I wanted it to. And I was so excited to get this up on the fireplace, but unfortunately I had to wait until the next day because it had to dry. 
and I was so excited to see all of this come together. When I put the small piece up on the mantle, something didn't feel right, it didn't feel complete, so I quickly went and made another painting that was slightly bigger, and this felt much more complete. But of course, this makes sense. This now follows the rule of threes. If you don't know that rule, it's a simple design rule that means an odd number of objects is visually more interesting to look at than an even number of objects. Then all that was left to do was fill up the rest of this mantle. <laughs> this video guys make sure to give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel i do a new diy video every single week so hit that notification button so you yeah, don't miss a video and i will see you guys next week bye guys